Hey there, I'm Annie Dickerson. And I'm Susan Elliott. On today's episode of the Life and Money Show, we are talking with a special guest. His name is Dustin Heiner. He's been on this show not once, not twice, but this is his third time now. We've been friends for many years. Dustin is a very successful real estate investor. He has now not just four kids like the last time he was on the show, but he has five kids now. He has a successful coaching program, and now he's created multiple events to bring together real estate investors. And I loved this because I wasn't on the first two interviews with him, but getting to hear his story again, it's like these layers of his onion are unfolding as we've gotten to know Dustin a lot more. I got to meet him for the first time at RubeCon this past year and really like digging in deeper as to what real estate investing has done for him in his life. So at first it gave him financial freedom. It gave him the ability to travel with his family, to show up. It gave him then the business skills to be able to manage his portfolio, but then to help other people build their portfolios as well. It gave him that and that So this episode today, I want the listener to really pay attention to this down the road types of things that these skills you're developing along the way can actually lead to. It's a great way to start to vision out the bigger goals in your life and how that's actually going to happen maybe even faster than you think through something like real estate investing, even if you're doing it passively, even if it's just sort of on the side for now, even if it's just to build your family's wealth. It's giving you skills that allow you to tap into and discover kind of like a deeper purpose in yourself, just like Dustin has done. Mm -hmm. And in this conversation, you're going to hear us talk a lot about service, paying it forward, and how real estate is a team sport. Because there's so many nuances to investing in real estate, especially single family homes versus multifamily versus commercial real estate. There's just so many moving pieces. So you definitely want to surround yourself with people who have been there, done it before and have seen success so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Plus, you get the accountability and the support when you need it so that you don't run away when things get hard. The community that Dustin created, RubeCon, which is Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, which we're going to talk about at length in the show, is a great community to support you. And we have also created a community specifically for people who are interested in investing passively in commercial real estate, so multifamily, hotels, etc. So we call that our Good Egg Investor Club. If you're interested or curious about investing passively in real estate, all you get all the benefits of investing without all the hassles of being a landlord, we invite you to join. Just go to goodagginvestments.com slash invest. With that, let's dive into our conversation with Dustin Heiner. Dustin, welcome to the show. How are you? Hi, ladies. I am so blessed. Things are going tremendously well. I mean, because I invest in real estate, I have so much extra time because I don't work for somebody else. I get to come on podcasts and hang out and talk to great people like you. So it's just a blessing to invest in real estate, but then also to hang out with you guys. Thanks. Fantastic. (laughs) Well, Dustin, you and I met, gosh, I think five or six years ago now. And what struck me from the very first moment that we met was not that you were this big, successful real estate investor, which you are, But your warmth and your energy, every room that you walk into, you can sense it right off the bat that you're not just putting on a front, but you genuinely care about people. And I've loved watching you over the years turn your real estate success, not only into yours and providing for your family, but also paying it forward and helping to establish this community through RubeCon, the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, which you created, I think, three or four years ago now. So I know there's a lot that goes into event planning. Oh my gosh, so much. And you're taking on so much risk by putting on a new event out there. So you mentioned that you feel blessed because you don't have to spend a lot of time and you're pretty successful with your real estate portfolio. But with events, (laughs) I know there's times when you have to put in a lot of time, a lot of sweat equity. So take us to a moment when putting the event together maybe wasn't exactly what you intended or it stressed you out or it turned into something that wasn't quite what you expected. So I could go with the very first time we put on the event, literally signing with the hotel for $150,000 guaranteeing that I will pay them if everything goes wrong. I could talk about that. 
because I hadn't sold any tickets. This was brand new, but I won't. I'll tell you the one time that I was put behind the eight ball and it was very, very hard on more of my wife. I could work literally all day, every day. That's just how I'm wired. But my wife doesn't really like it when I do that. And my family too. So we started in 2022. I had our first event in 2022 in Phoenix and it went well. A lot of struggles, a lot of growing and learning, not growing, but like learning pains, how to do it. But then the second year in 2023, I'm going to blame myself, but I had an employee who I said, I need you to reach out to sponsors. Now, sponsors, you don't make your money from ticket sales. In fact, you lose money from ticket sales because hotels are very, very expensive. I spent $17,000 on coffee for one year. That's like liquid gold. It's absolutely crazy. Such essential gold, though. Such essential gold for those. <laughs> it <events>. is. <laughs> So I told one of my employees, I said, I want you to reach out to sponsors because we got to start selling. And this was like July of 2022 for 2023. And she contacted maybe two or three and said, a couple of them were saying that we need to reach out in like beginning of the year. I'm like, okay, I'm trusting her. Fast forward, they've already got their budget, their plan. They've already mapped out all the events by January. So I'm starting to call up sponsors thinking, okay, this is a great time to start calling sponsors because if I don't get sponsors, I'm going to lose my shirt on this event. So in January, I start calling them. And then quickly, after like two or three calls, I realize, uh oh, I am not going to get any sponsors. They don't have any money. So I worked my tail off. Well, on top of putting on the event, trying to get from signage to we print up books that people use as workbooks and all these other things that we got to do and 50 speakers. I literally got 28 sponsors, worked so hard. I'm decent at sales, but that many that fast, it put me so far behind the eight ball that by the time RubeCon was done in March, the entire next month, I said, I'm done. I don't want to do anything, not just sales, but like (laughs) everything. (laughs) I need to just veg for the entire time because I would wake up and only think about sponsors. I would go to bed thinking about sponsors. I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about sponsors, all day thinking about sponsors. Fast forward, I've learned my lesson. And here's a great thing, the big lesson that I learned. And Annie, I know I'm looking at you, everything that you have done and built at your company. It's like all the people that you bring in that help you in your business. Same thing with real estate investing. The more people that you get around you, that's why I love creating communities, building RubeCon and having all these people connect the more people that are around you that can help lift the load, it makes everything so much easier. Fast forward now at Master Passive Income, the coaching arm of what we do and the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, my goal for 2024 was to hire or find people that I can replace myself in all these aspects of the business. I found a marketing guy who's doing an amazing job, just got a sales lady that's gonna be doing sales for all the sponsorships. She's a realtor, which a realtor, you know, they're pretty good at sales and she already has lots of connections. All that to say, getting around the right people, that's why I built RubeCon was because I saw my students needing more people to be around, more expert investors like you, Annie, you come and speak and rock the house every single year. So I found that the problem is trying to do it myself. Then finding the wrong people, not having the wrong people. You want to have the right people in place. So in anything, especially even like in my real estate investing, we just bought a 355 unit apartment complex in May. We closed in 2024 and distressed sell. Everything's great, but I didn't do most of the work. I was brought in because of my, I guess, ability to raise money and asset manage. But there were other people, the other three other partners are really good. So all that to say, getting back to the problem was I got put behind the A ball because I wasn't doing things right, but now getting the right people in place, which now lifts the load for everybody. You're so good at that. You always have seemed to have such a vision. I remember this is your third time on this podcast, but I think the first time I was blown away by how you talked about building a business around real estate investing. I've talked on this show many times about how I've struggled with that personally with my personal portfolio, how I didn't do it the way that you did. And you said something because you had operated other businesses before, like a convenience store. And you said, when you have a convenience store, you don't just get all the goods and throw them in the store. You got to get the shelves and the racks and the placement and the layout. And you got to think about that first. Then you put all the items on the shelf. And I thought it was so astute and such a wise way to go about any business, really, to set up the systems and the processes and then to let everything else fill that. 
Well, that was another gift that you gave to yourself too as a real estate investor. You saw, we all see this idea of freedom down the road. If I can bring in a paycheck, if I can bring in passive income, I can have freedom. And some of us can't really get past that point as far as what would you do with that freedom? Or what have you gained along the way to set yourself up to do these big dreams like hosting this hundreds of people together inspiring that and sending that back out into the world. These people that are so energized. I got to feel my first RubeCon for the first time this year. It was fantastic. One of the like most down to earth conferences that I've ever been to. Such good people. So you built that along the way, but you still are learning. And I think that you wouldn't have kept going if it was such a struggle to do the sponsorships and you didn't learn through that struggle and you didn't apply things to make it easier and less struggle down the road. And that's why you work successful in your real estate. That's why you are successful in your real estate, because you're learning these principles as you go. And I think the listener can really think about that. It may feel like you're having to do new things every day as you build your real estate investing portfolio. You're learning all of this and it feels like you're not getting it right, but you are because the failures along the way mean that you're able to get it right the next time. And you're able to improve on it every time. Your example with putting on these events is the perfect example for that, I think. Yeah, I personally found that as everything in life, and I hopefully everybody's in the same boat, but try to improve, try to get better. Also learning from your mistakes, like you were saying, Susan, learning from whatever mistakes come before. And just like Annie, when you talk about starting a business and having that business aspect, I learned from my mistake the first time I started investing in real estate. I was following what the quote unquote gurus were telling me. And definitely you should obviously keep listening to Life and Money Show. You guys are gonna love everything that these ladies are doing. Also on a previous episode, I explained how I did all this stuff. I did everything wrong and then realized there's gotta be a right way. And the idea of creating a business. Now, I'm definitely a real estate investor. That's definitely what I am. But if you boil everything down, I'm a business owner. And one of my businesses owns inventory and that inventory is real estate. It might be candy bars. It might be, I don't know, shovels, whatever it might be in your business. You have a product or a service or something that somebody else is gonna be paying for. Mine happens to be real estate. I love real estate, just like you ladies. And with the real estate, I figured out that I needed to create a business in order to make sure that it runs on its own or has experts doing it or that I'm even making money. Last thing you wanna do is start a business where you're losing money. You wouldn't start a business, you wouldn't want to. (laughs) So what you do is you create a business. And same thing like you were saying, Susan, every step of the way in every business that I own, literally and start, I think I have five, maybe six businesses now that make me money, depending on how they're compartmentalized. But all these businesses now making me money, every single time I look at it from a standpoint of how can I systematize it? How can I get right people in the place? And how can I make sure that I'm providing a value to whoever it is that's going to be partaking in whatever I'm providing? Give you a quick example, super awesome and blessed. So we have the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference. We have the Real Estate Wealth Builders Multifamily Conference where we're putting on strictly about multifamily and commercial real estate investing. That's in November, 2024. It's gonna be annual conference just at RubeCon. But with that, I've got amazing people around me Charles Rose Jr. was one of my students. Again, so successful. Now he's a coach here at Master Passive Income. Oh, I love Helps him. Helps out at RubeCon. Yeah, <laughs> he's terrific. He said, Dustin, I was a RIA, real estate investor meetup. I was a RIA vice president for three or four years. In fact, I was coaching him during that time. And he said, you know what? I didn't want to do that anymore. So I stopped, but now I want to get back into it. I wanted to create a real estate investor meetup for RubeCon. Fast forward, we created Rube Club. So Real Estate Wealth Builders Club. Love it. The first one's going to be in Charlotte. September is when they're going to start it. And it's going to be a monthly one. But here's what I'm thinking is now grabbing awesome people, bringing us all together so we can do awesome things to help more people. So if you have a business, it could be real estate, it could be a podcast, you name whatever business. If you're providing a good service and you're making sure that you're making money every single month, that is how you're going to be able to make sure that you're providing for your family and you're providing something that somebody else will pay you for. One quick last thing, I coach people how to invest in real estate and everybody knows that I literally own real estate, that that's where I make my money. When people pay me to jump on a call and coach them, I kid you not, I have so many people saying thank you for your time to coach me. Just like you ladies, it's so amazing. Like to me, I'm thinking, well, you're paying me, but they're saying in their mind, they're like, 
you don't have to do this. You can just be hanging out with your family and do this. Like it's a win, win, win for everybody. They're getting what they want. Hopefully they're going to become financially independent. They're investing in real estate, connecting with other people. I get what I want by being a person that connects people. I love doing that. So yeah, it's a huge win as long as they have business as well as learning from my mistakes, like you said, Susan. So 100% on board with you guys on that. Mm -hmm. I can kind of hear the listener asking a question. I'm going to channel it through that, let's say a single family rental investor. They've got maybe some single family homes, maybe a couple of small multifamilies. And they're thinking, wow, look at this guy. He started with single family rentals. He built up a great portfolio there. And now he's moved into multifamily, 355 unit multifamily. That's huge. So tell us, how did you get interested? How did that come on your radar? Why move into multifamily? And how has your involvement with creating and fostering this community played a part in that transition? Honestly, I think it came around from being around you, Annie, seeing everything that you're doing. I mean, I'd be completely honest. I'm like, wow, look at everything that they're doing. What's great when you have awesome people, like you rub off on each other. And so I was like, man, I got to start trying to do more on my end with multifamily. Be like Annie. <laughs> That's right. Everybody wants to be like me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I'm here. Yep. I learned so much from Annie. From the people around you. I mean, you look up and if you don't have people to look up to, it's hard to know what's coming next, what you are capable of too. And what's possible. I wouldn't even have known that this is possible unless I saw somebody else doing it. For me, it started when I was playing Monopoly as a kid. You know, I just, okay, this is the life lesson. You start with land, you build houses, collect rent, then you go up to hotels and you just keep getting there. It was fun. The first syndication I actually invested in was with you, Annie, in the hotels <laughs> and really excited about those. Those are great. So I got to play Monopoly in real life. Then on top of that, it was being around the right people. So Annie, you connected me because of RubeCon 2022, the very first one. I said, who else would you know that would be a great fit? Because you know the type of people we want to be around, genuine giving people. You said, well, I have a friend. Her, <laughs> her name's Peely, Peely Rusi. Her and her husband, great to come speak. Fast forward, now they spoke three times. They're good friends. I'm actually moving to Tennessee. I'm literally five minutes drive away from them, our new house we're moving to. Terrific people. And one day, Peely called me up out of the blue and said, hey, we have a deal and we want you to become a general partner. I'm like, yes. I, she didn't even tell me like what the deal was. I'm like, yes, because I really, I want to play Monopoly. I want to keep going that direction. With that, they showed me the deal. It, we were buying at 60 cents on the dollar. The seller was distressed. We got great seven year, 5.8% financing, cash flowing right away. Anyways, great, great property. I said, this is a huge win, win, win for everybody. But it was because of connection and because of trying to help each other. Obviously from you, Annie, pointing me to, Jason and Peely to the conference, helping each other out. And also first time ever trying to raise money because usually it's all the deals about myself. First time ever, I raised $1.5 million. Wow. And I just put out a few podcast episodes, sent some emails to my newsletter, my students and stuff. And I had all these people want to invest. It was like, wow, it seemed like it would be harder than it was, but it worked out really, really well. Oh my gosh. That is so incredible. I'm so happy for you. I just want to Set the context for the listener, because the first time that Julie and I tried to raise money, it was also for a really great deal, cash flowing, distressed. We thought we could raise a million. We thought easily the two of us together should be able to raise a million. And this was back in 2018 when the real estate market was pretty hot and it was continuing to grow. And we scraped the bottom of the barrel. We did everything that we could. We made calls. We did emails. We did everything we could reach out to our whole network. We raised less than half that. I think our total raise, including money from my mom, was around $400,000. So the fact that you went out with your first multifamily deal and blew it out of the water with 1.5 million just speaks to not only that energy and that warmth you bring, but this community that you've created and the trust that you've built with others. So that's amazing. Thank you. Honestly, it was so much fun because I'm a extrovert. I love being around people. I love talking to people. So I'll give you an example, I would put out on the podcast, hey, if you wanna invest with me, there's a link in the description click on that link, give me your information, and then I'll be able to reach out to you. It was fun talking to the people that listen to the podcast or you know, are part of the RubeCon community and getting to know them, where they are, see what their risk tolerances are, what their goals are, and then helping 
putting on events is definitely a, a good thing for me as an extrovert. It fills my need because when you're a podcaster, when you're at home, most of the time, you don't have to go to the job. You don't have to be there and talk to people all day. And then you get home, you're like, oh, I'm so tired. I want to talk to anybody. I'm like cooped up here. I'm like, I got to go talk to people. So now I got to put on more events to talk to more people. There you go. I love it. Always growing. Yep. Well, talk to us a little bit about multifamily. I know you're dipping your toes into this space and you're probably getting more and more involved in the multifamily space and you're putting together this event. But from your perspective, from your vantage point, is now a good time to invest in multifamily? What's going on in the multifamily space? What's your perspective and take on it? I think every single time anybody thinks of that thought is right now the good time. I would say 100% yes. If in five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, Every single time you have that thought, yes, it's a good time. And the reason why is because it's not the time, it's the deal. Every single deal is going to be different. You're going to find deals, let's say it's single family home. You might have somebody that got a divorce that they're like, I just don't want my wife to get a penny. So I'm just giving this away. You never know. It happens. Trust me, it does happen. And then there are great deals, but there are also very bad deals that you probably should not go after. At any time. Absolutely. In great times when the market's fantastic, where it's the best time to be buying, you're going to have bad deals that you don't buy. So right now it's just a little harder to find those deals. But if you're an investor, if you've been doing it where people know you as an investor, where you're helpful, where people say, you know what, I would like to work with that person, you're going to get deals coming to you. And it's going to be easier rather than like in 2010. Oh my goodness. If I had as much money as I had now, I would be so much more wealthy because back then I didn't have much money. I was just really breaking into it. Started in 2006 and just grew a little more over time. But there were so many deals. Like you could just trip and found a great deal. Now it's much, much harder. But deals come like this apartment complex that we just bought. It came because the partners, the general partners that I'm with, they're so well known as terrific real estate investors that can close on deals quickly, that can raise money. So the distressed seller went to a realtor. Realtor said, we know somebody, reached out to my partners and deal's done. So anytime there's going to be great deals. Now, I will say, like you said, Annie, there's always going to be bad deals. Now, I personally, when I look for multifamily, I look for a couple key criteria. Number one, the debt has to be good. No, here's a big thing. I'm not a syndicator. Like I'm not somebody that just syndicates and raises money. I'm an investor that happens to have some good deals. And eventually I'll bring it out to my audience. So I'm only going to invest my money in deals that I think this is a good deal. And then I would only bring it out to other people if I think it's a great deal. I know most syndicators do that same thing too. So for me, I want to make sure it's a distressed asset. So I buy it for less. And this, honestly, it's not just multifamily. It's even single family homes. When I'm buying a home, I don't pay top dollar. I don't pay above asking price. Those are homeowners, people that want to waste money. I'm an investor, so I want to make sure I capture equity. So if it's a distressed seller, then great. I want to make sure I have good debt so that I'm going to be able to have a good runway to be able to exit the property if I need to, where it's cash flowing. I want to make sure I'm making money every single month, a way to have value add, like forced appreciation. All these things are in my mind as I'm going through any specific deal. Could be multifamily, could be a single family home. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, this is the third year that RubeCon has been in existence. And now both Susan and I have been there. We've both been on stage and it's just a phenomenal feel and a phenomenal vibe and energy that's at that conference. It's unlike any other event that I've been to. So I'm really curious about your vision for RubeCon multifamily. What do you see as the future for that event? What do you hope for this first year for the event? And what are you excited about? So let me take a quick step back to to help you to understand why I wanted to go through the more stress of putting on another event, having multiple events a year. Here's the stress. I unveiled this in RubeCon 2022, the very first year. So being financially independent, it's a blessing to be able to have luxury to have more time. And be able to go towards your passion. And as I've coached more and more students, I think thousands of students now, how to invest in real estate, I've realized that whenever I buy a property, it's an accomplishment. I feel great. When I quit my job, it's an accomplishment. But I always felt like I needed another accomplishment. When I helped my first student to buy their first property, I felt fulfilled. I'm feeling fulfilled in life because I'm helping another human being get exactly what they want. It's not an accomplishment. I feel fulfilled. So every single time I'm like striving for that fulfillment feeling and over time doing this so many times with my students, I'm like, how can I exacerbate, like make that bigger? 
Then created RubeCon because I wanted to reach more people. And then at RubeCon, I realized I needed to create a goal for myself to help me to get out of bed because I could just create one event and just keep doing the same thing. Everybody, we could just buy that one property and just live on that one. No, I believe is we need to continue to grow. So at RubeCon 2022, I unveiled that my goal or mission in life now is to help 1 million people to invest in real estate and hopefully become financially independent. So pausing that, just before that, I created a goal a year or two before where I said, I want to make a million dollars in all of my businesses, just a quantitative number. So I knew I was reaching the goal, but that's the worst goal I've ever created. I'm not driven by money. I was like, I don't want to do this. Like, this is so boring. When I changed it to helping 1 million people to invest in real estate, now that gets me out of bed to create another event like the multifamily wealth builders event. So the reason why we started this one was because RubeCon is many things. It's educational, but also encouraging. We talk about goal setting. Annie, you came on stage and you rocked the house and started dancing. I was like, oh my goodness, he's <laughs> dancing on stage, getting everybody get, get up and dancing and having a great time. We break through barriers. 8 a.m. on a Saturday. You got to <laughs> do what you can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody yeah. was dancing in that room at that moment. It was good. It was perfect. I was like, this is so Annie. I love it. I had to record it. <laughs> I had to put it on social media. It was perfect. So at RubeCon, every asset class, also like motivational. Think of like Tony Robbins. Like we want that. We want you to know that you can do it and get you around the right people. With RubeCon Multifamily, the vision is to be much more on the track of strategy, tactics, and everything for every type of commercial real estate. And the reason why I didn't just say RubeCon commercial real estate is because it was a little longer. Multifamily for me, it gets us down the path of thinking commercial. So it could be storage facilities, mobile home parks, you name it, everything commercial. This is going to be so much more tactical. Like how are you going to invest? How are you going to find the deals? How are you going to asset manage? Everything that comes with commercial real estate as well as passive investing. How do you find the right passive investments to do? Node investing, things like that that are outside of every asset class. Basically, I wanted a brand new event that's going to center around commercial real estate investing. So my vision for this is to create so many more multifamily or commercial real estate investors that are going to be partnering together. Now, you ladies know, multifamily or commercial real estate, it's a lot harder. Well, I say harder. It's not the right way to say it. You just need more people. There's more hands in order to get things done because there's more moving parts. Single family home, very, very simple. Hire a property manager, you got it done, all set. But you need everything from asset management to underwriting to raising capital. I mean, you, your audience is really smart, so you know everything. But there's so many people that you need to be a part of and connect with. And there's also great experts that are going to show you how to do these things that have done it before. So that's the thing that I believe we need to get around the right people that experts have done before, but also the right people that we could potentially partner with or connect with. And one quick last thing is I've also realized every single relationship that I ever come in contact with, I look at it as a long game, meaning for everybody listening, if you meet somebody right then and there and you start thinking, what can I get out of this person right here and right there, then you're going to lose. Honestly, like every single time you're going to lose. If you look at how can I benefit this person now, then eventually something might pay off in the future. If we focus on serving first, then it's going to pay back. And honestly, looking at everything that I have now from the two different events, all the coaching, we now have a, a podcast network of six different podcasts talking about real estate. Everything that we're doing is because I first thought, how can I serve this person that I first come in contact with? And eventually they say, my goodness, Dustin, you've served me so much. I need to do something for you. That's like, it's not that I want to. I can't not do this. What can I do to help you? And that's how I've seen from my walk of coaching and all that stuff is the more people that I serve, the better my life gets and the better their lives get. 100%. And that's something that Susan and I ascribe to as well. And we're big on that here at Good Egg. It's about the goodwill that you're putting out in the world. It's not about where you're getting back. Eventually, that'll take care of itself. But it's really about how can I serve you? How can I bring that level of service to you and what your goals are? But I love that your thought behind calling it RubeCon multifamily versus RubeCon commercial. First, it's got a better ring. And second, multifamily, as we've found, is often the gateway for people to get into those other commercial real estate classes. Because who hasn't lived in an apartment building? It is very easy to understand, very simple, very close to single family rentals. So you can understand the model and get into it. And then once you do, once you invest in that first 
multifamily syndication, then you're like, okay, I understand how a syndication works. Now let me look at mobile home parks. Now let me look at self-storage. Let me look at hotels and industrial. That's how you really get that diversification. So I think that's a great strategy to start with multifamily and to really niche it down. As you mentioned, the commercial real estate is such a team sport. I definitely fell into that at the beginning, thinking I could do everything on my own. And I definitely could not <laughs> learn that very quickly. The partners are so essential to finding the right partners to complement your skill sets, but that you get along with and that you trust and they trust you because it's going to be a long-term partnership. It's not a one-month, two-month kind of a project. These projects are five, seven, 10 years long. You've really got to get to know people. And I would suggest that the listener think about attending one of these events. Even if you think that you don't know what you would be bringing to that team, what role you would be serving in that group that's going to make the deal happen, because that's going to help you switch to that serving mentality, too. And as you were describing that, like, what can I gain to what can I provide? What value can I give? We talk about that a lot. But sometimes I think unless you've had the like neural dopamine hit of how much happiness you actually get from serving, it's hard to believe in it. It's hard to say like, no, I need to serve my needs first and then I can give. Just go to one meeting, go to one thing with one main goal of just saying like, how can I help someone at this meeting? Maybe it's just like, here's how I manage my time. I mean, everyone does something really well and those skills can transfer into real estate investing more than you probably understand. So going to one of these events with the goal of just seeing how you can serve would be a great way to see how you can fit into these teams that put these things together, that put these big investments together. And you had a really good point that I didn't realize that the dopamine hit, like you said, like the service and how much more I feel, I feel like on a high when I serve people, then the after benefits of it too, is eventually it comes back to pay me 10 times over what I helped this one person to get. It wasn't until I started really serving people and started figuring out how can I serve people more that I found that this is literally the only way that I want to make money anymore. Like, I don't want to try to make money any other way other than serving people. And I kind of equated to this. This was part of my talk at RubeCon this last year was the more people that I serve, obviously, like I said earlier, the more money I make, but the more money they make, they get what they want. I get what I want. But when I first started thinking, I need to serve people. Yeah, I get it. It's kind of like if you have a sibling and your sibling starts having kids, and you have like, let's say a nephew and you go over there and say, oh, I love your son, just like he's mine. I said this to my brother one time. I said, oh, I love your son. I love him just like he's mine. He's like, no, you don't. Like, what do you mean? Of course I do. This is my nephew. Of course. He says, no, you don't love him like I do because you don't have the capacity to understand what it is like to love him like your own. Then when I had my first child, I was like, now I get it. Then same thing with service and helping other people and serving other people that as soon as I like, oh my goodness, I need to do only this from now on. Whereas when you're trying to get to financial freedom, don't get me wrong, everybody, if you're not at financial freedom yet, it takes the longest and it's a lot of work. And you kind of get a perspective that I should be serving people. But once you get to financial freedom, then it's like, wow, the doors open because all of a sudden you start the capacity or the understanding of what it actually is opens up in your brain. Now, like I said, I literally only focus on serving people. And I'd be completely honest, I make so much more money when I do that. Mm -hmm. It's no surprise. What was that? Oh, I'm going to butcher this. The Jim Rohn quote, you'll get everything you want in life if you just help enough other people get what they want. It's a very good quote, but yes, I'm with you on that. Very right down the line. <laughs> yes, I'm sure that the listener is probably chomping at the bit to get into this conference, either your RubeCon, the original conference or RubeCon multifamily, which is coming up within the next month or so. We're definitely going to ask you for all the details there. So to the listener, stay tuned. But first, we're going to move into the final part of our show You've been through this before, the Life & Money Show Spotlight Round. We're going to ask you three questions we ask all our guests. Dustin, you ready? Yes, do it. The first question is about your life and money. Dustin, tell us one thing that you're doing to live a meaningful and intentional life by design. So what I'm doing now is I'm creating an ecosystem business where everything connects to each other. My hub, think of like a wheel on a car. The hub connects to the axle, helps the car to go. 
is real estate, everything regarding real estate. And now I've talked about serving. How many more people can I serve? Well, a hub has spokes that goes out to the rest of the wheel that is now, think of that as every spoke connects to the hub and every spoke connects to each other through the hub. So we'll have the RubeCon, the conferences, we have a mastermind, you know, smaller, much more intimate events. We have the coaching, we're creating software. We have a podcast network. Think of all these different things. We're doing the monthly meetups. All these different things are all a part of the wheel, but they all touch the hub, which is real estate, which everybody, let's say they find me through everything we're doing, the monthly meetups that we do. Rube Club, it's going to be in Charlotte is where where it's going to be at the first one. But they find that, then they could find either coaching or they can find RubeCon or the multifamily event or whatever it might be. So what I'm doing now is let me figure out even more efficient and better way to reach more people and help more people. But here's the great thing. All these other businesses that I'm creating, I have other people that I'm elevating them, like I'm building them up as this is the expert. This is the person that you should be working with. So I'm winning by helping them be elevated so that they get better investing. They're also connecting to, let's say, people that come to the event so they can meet more people. For me, I'm trying to get everything connected as possible to serve more people to connect everybody together. Yeah. And you're so good at that. The holistic view of everything and bringing people together to do amazing things. And it elevates everybody. All right. Second question is about others, life and money. So share with us one thing that has really helped you on your path. It could be a book, a tip, a resource, anything that has really helped you that you think might help others as well. I would say... I can't remember the third question, but if the third question is on a book, I'm going to give the one right now is honestly be completely straightforward and say the Bible has helped me so much more so in my life, because as I read the Bible, I take anything from it. Jesus Christ, he literally served. He said, I did not come to be served, but to serve. And then as I read the Bible, believing in it, I'm thinking I need to do what I see Jesus doing. And in implementing that in my life, I've seen how in service to other people, just like the whole episode has been all about service. It's easy to just disregard the message of like, I hear, okay, I listened to that episode. It's about serving. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I'm going to move on to serving or from serving or do something else. Being straightforward and say, the reason why I only serve now is because I get so much more benefit. In fact, when I read the Bible, I know the Bible is something that's going to help me in all walks of my life. So why would it not help me also in business or making money or whatever it might be? So applying that. So for me, the biggest thing that helps me, if I were to suggest to anybody, I think the last time on the show, I talked about either passive income. I remember something different, but now being on here the third time, it's literally all about serving. Like I said, it's easy to kind of just put it check. I need to serve people, move on. It's hard for me to really drive it home that this is literally the only way that I make money anymore. Only thing I want to do in any business because I make other people's lives better and I make my life better from it too. So good. And a quick fact check moment for the listener. I did look it up and I did get it wrong. It was not a Jim Rohn quote. It was a Zig Ziglar quote. It is, you can have everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. And Dustin, that's exactly the walking exemplification of that. That's all that you do, live and breathe. So it's no wonder that you are creating such a beautiful life by design for yourself and your family. Speaking of which, our third question is typically, what's one thing you're doing to help make the world a better place? And you're doing so many things, but in particular... I want to angle this question around your family because you now have not four, but five kids, the latest one born just earlier this year. And as you're building up this real estate empire, so to speak, and you're creating this community to teach your children, what do you hope that they take away from all of this? A couple of things. Number one, just tangibly real estate. If you have buy and hold real estate that you can literally give to your kids, generational wealth. I will literally give these properties to my kids. I mean, you could see them in the background. If you're watching this, I have four kids in the picture, but we just had our fifth. So generational wealth, that's 100%. But then also the knowledge of everything that I'm doing. My wife does the homeschooling. I have the easy job of making money. She's got the hard job of homeschooling all five kids. But with that, I'm also educating them on how to do all this sort of stuff. In fact, every one of my kids, my daughter is 16 now. And Before she's 17, our goal is for her to buy her first rental property. 
And every kid from then on, that's their goal. Before they either turn 16 or definitely 17, that they get their first rental property and me coaching them along the way. Because in the end, I would love to see them not have to work unless they want to. You know, this is something I want to do. But with all the businesses that I own too, they even come and work at my conferences. Like they do registration, they sell hats and all that sort of stuff. So I know that I could not give my job to my kids. Nobody can. You can't give your job to the kids, but you can give your investments, your properties, your businesses, whatever you have that's tangibly yours, you can give your kids. For me, what I'm passing on is knowledge, tangible things like real estate, but then even businesses that I own, bringing them and building them up in it. That's so beautiful. It really is at the end of the day, that knowledge is the most valuable thing that you can give them. Not only the knowledge, because now you can probably type it into chat, chat GPT. What are the steps to invest in real estate? But really the wisdom, the hard-earned wisdom that you've gained through all the trials and tribulations that you've personally gone through, not only with your real estate portfolio, but now coaching these thousands of people and paying it forward. Now you get to pass that along to your children. So they get to start many, many, many steps ahead. So what a beautiful thing. What a beautiful environment ecosystem that you're creating, not only for your family, but now this extended RubeCon family. And I really, really hope the listener, if you have not been to a RubeCon event, you must go. If there is one event, I will recommend it is RubeCon. Whether you are just starting out in real estate or you are in multifamily commercial real estate, this is one of the best events to attend, to build community, to meet other people to make friends within this space. It's such a wonderful event. So now, Dustin, tell everybody if they are interested in coming to the RubeCon multifamily event coming up in November, tell them the date and where they can go to get their tickets. Yeah, absolutely. And I also want to give you guys 10% off. If you use a promo code GOODEGG, just use that promo code. Very, very simple, GOODEGG. I'll give you 10% off. But if you go to rubecon.com, R-E-W-B-C-O-N.com, just abbreviated, Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, all abbreviated. I know the link will be in the description, but use that promo code, good again. And honestly, Annie's a really good friend of mine. So I'm always gonna have that promotion code for every single event, at least our best I can. Every event, if it's RubeCon or RubeCon Multifamily, we're even gonna be putting on new events in the future. At least that's the roadmap is gonna do. We'll have good egg because Annie's a good friend of mine. I want to promote everything that Annie does. I mean, she's just terrific. But anyways, I love that everybody is in here that's wanting to have a better life. They want to grow. They want to basically get out of the rat race. And that's what we do. So go to rubecon.com. You'll have the best time. And one quick thing, I didn't share this, but a lot of real estate investor events, they are hype and sales pitch from the main stage. And they say, run to the back and go give us lots of money. It's normally a million dollars, but it's $50,000 a day. I can't stand those personally. So I said, I want to create an event that is the opposite or one that I would want to go to, which is just community. It's just experts helping and just everybody wanting to be together and create a community. And that's where I created. But yes, you can go there. Plus also, if you want to listen to me, I have my own podcast, Master Passive Income. I've been doing that since 2015, I think. And it's so much fun podcasting. I mean, it's terrific because you see people's lives change. But yeah, you can find me on there. Plus, oh, one last thing. I've been trying to put a little effort into Instagram. So the Dustin Heiner, T H E. Dustin Heiner. And I'm not that arrogant to be the Dustin Heiner. It's the only handle I could come up with, but uh, you could reach out to me. I love getting DMMs on there. So you can reach out to me on there too. Amazing. Dustin Heiner, successful real estate investor, coach, mentor, creator of Master Passive Income, creator of RubeCon and all of the RubeCon variations that are going to be coming up in the future. Dustin, thank you as always for being here with us and our listener audience and sharing your infinite wisdom and your energy with us. Thank you, ladies.